How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm just going to be going over some things that uh, happened in the past couple of weeks. And the one thing that is very unsexy about doing penetration testing. Apologies for not posting content lately. I've just been super busy with work, traveling again, like I said in my previous video. But I do have some time this week to make... Uh, you know, a few more videos. So one request uh, that I got in a YouTube comment was to talk about report writing of penetration tests, which I will get to, but I want to cover some things newsworthy that has happened since I have last made a video. So the first thing, FBI, well, actually the Department of Justice came out uh, saying that they had a news or a press release for today, February 10th, 2020. And it was in regards to the Equifax breach back in 2017. And for those of you that don't remember, back in uh, July, August, 2017, Equifax got completely obliterated uh, by these individuals that the FBI have identified. And they exploited a Apache Struts vulnerability, which I don't remember the CVE off the top of my head, but there it is on the screen. That's what they exploited. Equifax had plenty of time to patch your systems, but they didn't. So, kind of sucks, but at least we got some faces associated with the breach. So, kudos to the FBI for actually identifying the individuals that uh, did this attack. So, next up, if you are watching this on Monday night, uh, which I'm hoping to get out by then, but tomorrow is Patch Tuesday. Unlike last Patch Tuesday, the uh, NSA hasn't came out with any sort of cryptic warning of this upcoming Patch Tuesday. So, as always, Microsoft releases critical patches uh, for Windows 10, Windows Server 2012 Plus, and, and this will be the first patch Tuesday that Windows 7 will not receive updates and Windows Server 2008. So if you're still on those systems, uh, don't be on those systems anymore. Next up, I want to talk about a FOIA request someone made to the NSA for their Python training program. Uh, someone made a FOIA request, and for those that are unfamiliar, is the Freedom of Information Act, which basically allows citizens to audit the government and ask for things such as training programs or the budget for XYZ. You can make a request, be very straight to the point, and you can get stuff like this. Uh, the NSA's training program. So it's a pretty hefty sized document. It's a PDF. Uh, it's about, well, not about, it is 395 pages long, and I think it's a 100 megabytes or something like that. I'll put a link down uh, directly to that uh, link. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then next up, this one's kind of interesting. It falls in the, under the scope of vulnerability management. Flaw in Philips Hue smart bulbs exposes your Wi-Fi network to hackers. So after looking at this just briefly, I'm going to go into it a little bit more. There's actually a POC video on how to do this. So patch your uh, light bulbs. Hashtag internet of shit. So with that, let's get into the one thing that every single person hates, or most people hate, and, a, and the number one thing that a lot of people just overlook when they want to get into pen testing. When you're doing pen testing and you're doing all this technical stuff, that's cool and all, uh, but you could be the best pen tester in the world. You make all the scripts, you pwn the entire network, but if you don't know how to put it into words on a document, that is readable to a CEO or whoever's paying you for this test, it really doesn't matter. You could be a mediocre pen tester like me uh, and able to write a somewhat readable uh, report and you will do just fine. Because when you do a pen test, you are trying to find vulnerabilities and holes and ways a company can improve their stuff. But when you write a report, it has to be there and leave kind of a legacy of the business that you're representing, the consulting firm that you're working for. Basically, you write this report and everything on that report can be read by anyone in the company five, 10, 20 years from now. And it could, and it should be like, oh, that's what they found. This was the issue that they think might have caused it. And this is what the consulting firm recommends to do. Report writing. Now, I'll put a template eventually on my website. I'll have to make it with macros and like that. I'll put it on my website and yes, I will accept donations. Not required, but you know, I will accept donations wherever I can. But so the meat and potatoes of a report. So you have a cover page, which basically you would say like company that you're pen testing report, pen test, internal and external network audit. 
and you'll put like the date and such like that on. There. After that, kind of just talk about what the document it is, what it's covering, what it doesn't cover. It's basically the scope that you were given at the initial phase of your pen test, which the scope I explained in uh, my previous video, I believe, is what you can and can't do sort of thing. And then you have a an executive summary. So an executive summary, basically a very high level what we were able to do during the penetration test. So then you'll put under t like a technical review section, the findings. So what you found during the pen test. Now, the one thing that is crucial when you're doing a penetration test is to document every single thing that you do. There's tools out there like Hunchly that you could use, mainly used for OSINT investigations, but it's extremely useful logging everything that you're doing. If you've got admin access by accident, you wanna log that somehow. So keeping logs of everything uh, and if you're doing like a pen test with multiple people, you know, that aren't really local to you, uh, using something like Slack and Google Drive or whatever is extremely useful to just keeping a log of everything. And then when it comes time to writing your report, which you should probably be doing while you're doing the pen test, um, you have everything in one location. So you'll have Cody's folder whoever's folder, whoever's folder and all of their findings. And then you'll have like a three hour call or whatever. And you just discuss the findings and then map it out uh, top to bottom. So the executive summary, again, kind of, you know, the company that you work for says so like we found critical vulnerabilities and cr from critical to low finding vulnerabilities. And then I work my way from critical all the way down to low when you go down your technical findings. Uh, and just some, a couple nuances. So if you say like, uh, like 45, cracked 45 passwords. You want to type out 45 and then in parentheses put 45. It's, 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 it's might be like that. So then you will talk about your critical findings all the way down to your low. So if you exploited Apache struts, you want to talk about Apache struts in your technical overview and kind of explain the situation that was presented. So you say, uh, after doing our initial reconnaissance, doing a Nessus scan, we found this host running Apache struts. We tested it in Metasploit for CVE 2017, blah, 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 blah. We were able to get a reverse shell or, you know, whatever on this host, which then we were able to pull this down from. Uh, and you want to talk about users that you exploit. So if you're able to get a local user who happened to share the same computer as a admin, you want to talk about that and you want to specify exactly, you don't want to, you don't want to be like super duper, like saying person's full name. You just want to talk about usernames. And yeah, basically the technical details is exactly what happened. Like you're writing, yeah, it's exactly what happened. This was a situation. This is what we did. These were the results. And then any links you put. So if you're if you reference like a link, so let's say you use Shodan in your external uh, reconnaissance, you'll put Shodan.io in the body of the text, and then you'll put in brackets one. Uh, and then down below at the page, you'll say one and then the link. So it keeps it a little clean. Uh, and then later on, they can click on that link or whatever and view those results. I, I would recommend always doing uh, anything that NIST puts out. So when you write your report, you, you, you tell your findings and then any recommendations that you have. Uh, so I typically lean on NIST, which is the National Institute, what is NIST? National Institute of Standards and Technology. They basically make the standards for, you know, making a password, you know, password requirements for the government needs. So anytime you can reference NIST, I would highly recommend it. And then also if you recommend like any products for the company to use, try to be vendor agnostic. So if you say, we recommend you have a scanning platform, don't just say Tenable, say Qualys, Tenable, Nexpose, and then so on. And then Seam stuff, again, try to list multiple vendors for that company to choose uh, <clears throat> later on. Now, when you make these uh, suggestions, make sure you're making suggestions that are authentic. If you absolutely hate this product, don't suggest it to your client. Uh, you should have some experience using those products so you can give an actual recommendation to your client because it, like, again, that's a direct reflection of your ability to be a pen testing company. And then typically at the bottom, I'll put just like a list of vulnerabilities that were found on like Shodan or anything like that, like Wapalizer. I'll just list that out. Like this domain was on Wapalizer was running jQuery that was vulnerable to X. Uh, so just like notable things, like even if you didn't pwn them or anything like that, just make the customer aware of it because that's, you know, 
good thing to do. So it was. it's kind of hard to make this video because there's so much to it, but I will try to make a template for everyone to use. Uh, donations, again, are accepted and welcomed. Uh, with that, thank you for watching this video. If you can, give this video a thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button, share this with at least 850,000 of your friends, and you all have a fine and dandy day. Thank you.